structures piercing clavipectoral fascia are all except so let us see structures piercing clavipectoral fascia we know that thoracoacromial artery then we have cephalic vein lateral pectoral nerve and lymphatics option given these are cephalic vein thoracoacromial artery and lateral pectoral nerve we have to exclude lateral thoracic artery second question it is about the breast breast is a modified sphaed gland and another important question that can be asked is the location of the mammary gland that it is situated in the superficial fascia of the pectoral region third question was a image based question about the lactiferous duct sinus isn't it so it is asked that the lactiferous sinus is shown by or denoted by which label so label a it denotes the duct label b it denotes the sinus label c it denotes lobule whereas label d it denotes acini the correct answer is b we can see here in the explanation so lactiferous sinus which has been shown by label b in the question parenchyma of breast is ectodermal in origin we have to state whether it is true or false we know that parenchyma is ectodermal in origin whereas stroma it is mesodermal in origin so it is a true statement most of the lymph of breast it drain to so we can see in the diagram most of the lymph it is draining towards the anterior or pectoral group of lymph nodes from here it will go to the central group of lymph nodes and ultimately it will drain towards the apical group of axillary lymph nodes we can also see the medial quadrants that is upper medial and lower medial these are draining towards internal mammary lymph nodes few of the lymph nodes of the lower quadrants these are draining towards subperitoneal plexus and they reach up to the ovary causing a tumor over there that is called as krukenberg's tumor another important multiple choice question that can be asked so we have to keep in mind most of the lymph from the mammary gland it is drained towards anterior axillary group of lymph node branches of the third part of axillary artery are all except so we know that first part is having superior thoracic second part is having acromiothoracic and lateral thoracic so lateral thoracic here we have to exclude this is the this will be the exception so this is the answer to this question lateral thoracic artery is a branch from second part of axillary artery not third part axillary vein it is formed by union of cephalic vein and vena comitans of brachial artery so look here the cephalic vein which is running along the preaxial border or the lateral border it is seen to be opening into the axillary vein whereas the axillary vein it is formed by the basilic vein and union of vena comitans of the brachial artery so this is a false statement cephalic vein it is not forming axillary vein largest branch of the brachial plexus it is the radial nerve it is the largest branch of the brachial plexus and it is a branch from posterior cord of the brachial plexus with all the root values c5 to t1 next is the image based question nerve supply of the muscle labeled a in the diagram so what we have to look for we have to look for the whether it is a posterior view or anterior view how to determine looking at the spine of the scapula so it is a dorsal view then we have to determine the border it is a lateral border and from the lateral border we are having two muscles teres minor and teres major how to differentiate between these two teres minor is going and insert on the lower impression of the greater tubercle posteriorly whereas teres major it is going anteriorly and inserted on the medial leap of bicipital group so muscle a is teres major nerve supply of teres major frequently asked and difficult to remember for students it is lower subscapular nerve 
it is lower subscapular and for teres minor we know it is supplied by axillary nerve along with deltoid isn't it all of the following muscles are lateral rotators of arm we know that in general the muscles arising from the posterior aspect and going on the posterior aspect these are lateral rotators so from the scapula posterior aspect or the dorsal aspect arising muscles are posterior fibers of deltoid and from the supraspinous and infraspinous fossa it is the infraspinatus muscle and teres minor it is arising from the dorsal surface of the lateral border so all these muscles these are going and inserted on the posterior features of the humerus so deltoid on the deltoid tuberosity infraspinatus on the middle impression of the greater tubercle whereas teres minor on the lower impression of the greater tubercle whereas subscapularis it goes anteriorly on the lesser tubercle and it also arises from the costal surface so this is a exception it is a medial rotator subscapularis it is a medial rotator all other muscles are lateral rotators so this is the action uh, this is the answer to this question chief abductor of arm so chief abductor we know that the multipinnate fibers of deltoid which are also called as the acromial fibers or middle fibers of the deltoid these are chief abductors of arm supraspinatus it is the initiator of the abductor it is not a chief abductor it initiates or it brings about from 0 to 15 degree of abduction serratus anterior it is helping in overhead abduction along with trapezius subscapularis it is not an abductor rather it is medial rotator and adductor so correct answer chief abductor is deltoid select incorrect statement about anatomical events occurring at the level of insertion of coracobrachialis so what are the important events so ulnar nerve enters posterior compartment very true ulnar nerve enters from anterior to posterior compartment at the level of insertion of coracobrachialis also the median nerve crosses from lateral side to the medial side of the brachial artery and radial nerve passes to anterior compartment so incorrect statement is cephalic vein pierces diffacia in the previous answer in the previous questions explanation we have seen the cephalic vein it is piercing diffacia in the deltopectoral groove and not at the level of r isn't it so the incorrect option in this question it is the cephalic vein pierced diffacia floor of cubital fossa it is a very important question and very basic question for undergraduates floor of cubital fossa it is formed by two muscles supinator and brachialis so you have to opt for both these choices the image in the explanation the front view as well as the cross sectional view of supinator and brachialis which are forming floor of the brachial plexus then we have the boundaries of the brachial plexus laterally by the brachioradialis and medially by pronator teres isn't it next question the label a in image denotes it is again a image based question here we have to look carefully for the attachments the label a structure it is arising from coracoid process and it is forming a bulky portion of the muscle and it is crossing the elbow joint so such a muscle is biceps brachii muscle and the coracoid process from coracoid process arises short head of the biceps brachii another tendon which we can see here besides it on lateral aspect it is the long head of the biceps which is coming from supraglenoid tubercle isn't it so label a in the image is short head of the biceps brachii this was the correct answer next next it is the label a pointed at the blue area 
what we have to determine that this is the anterior view of the scapula anterior view of the humerus lateral border of the humerus is labeled one structure on the lateral surface it is the deltoid tuberosity isn't it it is the deltoid tuberosity so the muscle inserted it will be the deltoid muscle isn't it on the lateral surface at the level of insertion of coracobrachialis there is insertion of deltoid muscle again there is a image based question what are the things to note here we have to determine whether this is a anterior view or posterior view so this is a posterior view because we can see the spine of scapula and we have to determine the border we can see the humerus which is articulating on the lateral angle or the glenoid angle so the border which is asked it is the medial border the surface it is the dorsal surface so we know the muscle attachments on the medial border dorsal surface and above the spine of the scapula it is levator scapuli muscle so the correct answer is levator scapuli muscle now fnac fnac is fine needle aspiration cytology okay. so the correct answer or the full form of fnac is fine needle aspiration cytology so this we have read in the applied anatomy of breast isn't it label a in image denotes the external features of the bones so you have to be familiar with lower end of the humerus it has been shown we can see the articular areas that is capitulum and trochlea the labeled area a it is just above the capitulum so it will be a radial fossa it will be radial fossa so we know that radial notch it is present on ulna radial tuberosity it is present on radius isn't it so the label a in the image is radial fossa next nerve supply of the muscle label a in the diagram so again the same pattern of reasoning that is posterior view by looking at the spine of the scapula then determining the border that is a lateral border the lateral border it has got two origins one is teres minor another is teres major so the muscle label a we can see it is inserting on the lower impression of the greater tubercle so this has to be teres minor muscle and they have asked the nerve supply so nerve supply of the teres minor we know that it is supplied by axillary nerve isn't it now we have to choose incorrect statements about subscapularis what are the things we know about subscapularis that it is a multipinnate muscle it is a true statement hybrid muscle because it is supplied by upper and lower subscapular nerve then it is inserted on the lesser tubercle of humerus so these three statements these are true statements and the incorrect statement it is arising from the dorsal surface of the scapula we know that subscapularis it arises from subscapular fossa which is present on the costal surface of the scapula so this one is the incorrect statement so you can see in the diagram the multipinnate arrangement of the fibers as well as the insertion on the lesser tubercle next question is about gastrulation gastrulation it is a very basic question frequently asked it is a process of formation of three germ layers that is endoderm ectoderm and mesoderm next question is the correlation between ovarian cycle and menstrual cycle so what they have asked follicular phase of ovarian cycle it coincides with which phase of the menstrual cycle we know that the follicular phase it coincides with the menstrual and proliferative phase isn't it so let us have a look at the image so these are comparison of menstrual and ovarian cycle side by side follicular phase we can see it is coinciding with menstrual phase and proliferative phase whereas the luteal phase it is 
coinciding with secretory and premenstrual phase isn't it period of greatest sensitivity to teratogens in embryo is following period of intrauterine life so we know that teratogens these are the harmful substances or harmful agents which will bring about the congenital anomalies or organ deformities so this will affect the cells so most of the organs they will be formed during third week of intrauterine life to the eighth week of intrauterine life so this is the duration when the teratogens will harm the embryo most so greatest sensitivity to teratogens it is during third week to eighth week of intrauterine life next question it is having two statements and we have to choose whether both are true both are false or which one is true and which one is false pregnancy can be avoided if intercourse is done in safe period so it is a true statement so pregnancy can be avoided if uh, intercourse is done in safe period the b statement sta uh, it states that safe period is 4 days before and 2 days after ovulation so the sperm it remains in the female reproductive system after intercourse up to 2 to 3 days whereas the ovum it can remain viable up to 24 hours so this particular period that is 4 days before and 2 days after ovulation if the intercourse is done within this period it is very likely that the pregnancy may happen so it is not a safe period it is unsafe period so statement a is true and b is false individual genetic variations in species is due to crossing over this portion is correct but the last word that is in mitosis it is the wrong so entire statement it becomes false due to the last word so individual genetic variation in species is due to crossing over in meiosis it is the correct statement so chiasmata formation as you can see in the diagram it is the characteristic of meiosis isn't it next important question it is the comparison of or the cell organelles in the spermatid and the, their derivatives in the sperm so this is spermato spermatogenesis and the morphological changes which are taking place in the spermatid to the spermatozoa these have been discussed so the nucleus it gets converted into head of the sperm whereas the golgi apparatus it gets converted into acrosomal cap then the centrosomes two centrioles these are formed one will form the axial filament and another will form annulus at the distal end the mitochondria it will form the middle piece around the axillary filament so this process of transformation of spermatid to the spermatozoa it is called as spermiogenesis it is called as spermiogenesis okay so it may be asked as a very short answer question for two marks what are the counterparts of the spermatid and spermatozoa so what is asked in this question axial filament of sperm it is derived from it is derived from centriole isn't it one primary spermatocyte it forms four sperms whereas one primary oocyte forms one mature oocyte we know that during the formation of oocyte that is oogenesis there is formation of two or three polar bodies isn't it so only one mature oocyte will form the from one primary oocyte whereas one primary spermatocyte it will give rise to four sperms this is a true statement 
desmosomes are most common type of cell junctions they are also known as so desmosomes these are also called as macula adherens so we'll see so this is the first one in the image it is the macula adherens or the desmosome so there is a patch there is a focal spot and in between there are cam that is cell adhesion molecules which are present in between the two cells and there are plaques which are present so these are macula adherens whereas when there is a elongated patch present on the cell cell membrane it is called as a zonula adherens so there is a macula adherens and the zonula adherens these are adhesive belts zonula adherens these are called as a adhesive belts whereas in the next diagram we can see the tight junction these are also called as zonula occludens or occluding junction and when there is a little gap present it is called as a gap junction so we have got macula adherens zonula adherens zonula occludens and gap junction these are very confusing terminologies but no option the student mbbs undergraduate has to remember this next question it is a histology image we can see the arrows are pointing towards certain cells these cells are having flat nucleus and these are flat cells with a flat nucleus so such description it goes with simple squamous epithelium so we can see this image it is showing a glomerulus and outside the glomerulus we can see the cuboidal lined proximal and distal convoluted tubules also so the particular portion which is seen it is a glomerulus and the arrows are pointing towards simple squamous epithelium isn't it the region of golgi apparatus near nearer to the cell nucleus okay region of golgi apparatus nearer to the cell nucleus we can see this in the diagram so nucleus it has been shown by the purple color then there is rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum and above there is brown colored golgi complex so the part of the golgi complex nearer to the nucleus it is called as the cis face of the golgi or cis golgi and the part towards the cell membrane it is the trans face of the golgi or away from the nucleus it is the trans face so cis face and trans face a frequently asked question next question is about the histology we have to identify the epithelium shown in the image so we can see the elongated cells and elongated nucleus so this has to be a simple columnar epithelium let us see what the question is asking so image is lining epithelium of small intestine so which is this epithelium so there is a hint it has been provided small intestine so even if you don't identify the histological image still you can read the small intestine and you can remember that small intestine it is lined by columnar epithelium simple columnar epithelium so this was a easy question next important question it is about the euchromatic and heterochromatic nucleus so heterochromatic nucleus it is also called as a condensed nucleus we can see in the image a condensed and ichnotic nucleus whereas on the b part there is a dispersed chromatin inside the nucleus so it is called as a euchromatin whereas the cell a it is showing heterochromatin so euchromatin it is seen in the active cells whereas the heterochromatin it is seen in the inactive cells or mature cells now let us read the question first shown in the image is pseudostratified epithelium with stereocilia 
the tissue sown is isn't it so they have asked two uh, they have given two hints one is pseudo stratified epithelium and another is stereocilia so if you know the stereocilia these are present at a particular location only then you will be able to answer this question because pseudo stratified epithelium it is present in trachea also in epiglottis also but the stereocilia these are classically present in epididymis isn't it so the correct answer for this question is epididymis and the test is is there having seminiferous tubule lined by seminiferous epithelium that is uh, different stages of developing spermatogonia which are seen in the lining epithelium of seminiferous tubule so the correct answer to this question is epididymis choose the correct one about fertilization barriers the fertilization barriers from outside to inside these are as seen in the image so outermost it is the corona radiata then the number 2 it is the zona pellucida which is on the inner aspect it is surrounded by perivitelline space and then we have the vitelline membrane so 1 2 3 these are zona pellu uh, these are corona radiata then number 2 is zona pellucida and number 3 innermost it is the vitelline membrane so first barrier the sperm has to cross it is the corona radiata second barrier zona pellucida and third barrier vitelline membrane which is not true about fertilization not true it occurs in ampule of uterine tube it is a true statement then zona reaction prevents entry of other sperms in ovum so zona reaction is a reaction which will prevent the entry of other sperms in ovum so important question frequently asked question about fertilization acrosome reaction prevents entry of other sperms in ovum so acrosome reaction it is a reaction which is occurring into the zona pellucida and these are the changes occurring in the sperm acrosome so this will facilitate the penetration of sperm through the zona pellucida which will help the sperm to enter and reach into the ovum inside the perivitelline space isn't it so acrosome reaction it will not prevent but it will facilitate the entry of sperm isn't it so this is a incorrect or false statement second meiotic division of sperm is completed only after penetration of sperm in oocyte this is a very true statement so what is a acrosome reaction when the head of sperm comes in contact with zona pellucida it is induced by zona proteins it is induced by zona proteins the acrosome releases digestive enzymes which cause lysis of the zona pellucida and plasma membrane so both are lysed and the sperm is able to get the entry inside the ova so once again acrosome reaction it will facilitate the entry of sperm whereas zona reaction it will prevent entry of other sperm into the ovum so multiple sperm entries these are prevented next question which of the following is morula stage this was the question image a b c d we know that morula is 16 cell stage so this is the answer image so 16 cell stage it is called as morula prevention of ectopic pregnancy is mainly function of we know that the trophoblast it has got the erosion properties and once it reaches the uterine endometrium it will erode the uterine endometrium and then it will get implanted so this trophoblast it is prevented 
from eroding abnormal sites like fallopian tube by zona pellucida so this zona pellucida it will disappear at the 5 days after fertilization by the time this developing embryo or we can say the blastocyst it reaches uterus to its ideal site or normal site so the important function of zona pellucida is prevention of ectopic pregnancy okay so prevention of ectopic pregnancy is mainly function of zona pellucida select the correct image the correct image out of these is this one the amniotic cavity towards the ectoderm side primary yolk sac towards the endoderm side so this is the correct diagram next question it asks prochordal plate in the image it is shown by label so this is the surface view of embryonic disc surface view of embryonic disc on the surface view we can see two circles one is labeled by a another is labeled d and a purple colored structure so these structures from a is prochordal plate which will determine the head end and d is cloacal membrane and from the dorsal end only the primitive streak arises which is shown by the purple color and b it is showing primitive pit isn't it so let us see the description image so this is the prochordal plate then there is a primitive pit at the site of primitive knot and the purple colored primitive streak which arises from the caudal end and then there is a cloacal membrane so what is prochordal plate this is present at the cranial end this will determine the cranial end and the caudal end of this the germ disc and in the region of prochordal plate what happens the endodermal cell they become columnar in the region of prochordal plate the endodermal cells they become columnar from cuboidal isn't it true about medical termination of pregnancy so the mtp act it has been amended in 2021 and it will allow the termination of pregnancy up to 24 weeks and even in certain cases beyond 24 weeks so previously it was 20 weeks for all indications but now the certain amendments or certain corrections has been made to the mtp act which will allow the medical termination up to 24 weeks in case of rape survivors so it has to be uh, confirmed or it has to be advised by two registered medical practitioner isn't it and even after 24 weeks a uh, medical board has to be approve the medical termination of pregnancy so this was a important mcq regarding medical termination of pregnancy primitive streak primitive streak we have already seen in the surface view of the germ disc bilaminar germ disc it is a primitive streak which will further form the third layer that is the mesoderm which is present in between ectoderm and endoderm so this primitive streak it is ectodermal in origin so we can see it is a thickened ectoderm which is forming the primitive streak now next question is about intra embryonic siloom intra embryonic siloom so we know the divisions of mesoderm which has been shown that is paraaxial intermediate and lateral plate mesoderm and this lateral plate mesoderm it develops cavities which communicate and they form a uniform cavity which is called as a intra embryonic siloom so intra embryonic siloom is cavity of lateral plate mesoderm 
which will further divide it into pericardial, pleural and peritoneal cavities. So the answer is lateral plate mesoderm. Next choose the correct image. The four images are shown. Basically they have asked the attachments on the intertubercular sulcus. So we know that intertubercular sulcus on the lateral lip it receives pectoralis major, on the medial lip it receives teres major and in the floor the latissimus dorsi it is inserted and the traveling tendon it will be of the long head of the biceps. So three tendons these are correctly shown in the only one image that is on the lateral lip pectoralis major on the medial lip teres major and in the middle there is latissimus dorsi it is seen in the image d isn't it correct image for cubital fossa this is a very very basic question so this is a sort of revision for contents of the cubital fossa so what are the contents of the cubital fossa from medial to lateral what are the things to note in this diagram we have to identify the medial epicondyle we have to identify the lateral epicondyle we have to focus on the supracondylar line and the muscle arising from it so that we can identify that this is the brachioradialis and from the common flexor origin we can see the pronator teres muscle which has been pierced by median nerve so this is the correct image which is showing median nerve brachial artery tendon of biceps and radial nerve from medial to lateral true about trapezius and latissimus dorsi so trapezius and latissimus dorsi these are large muscles of the back both are supplied by spinal accessory no it is a false statement the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid these are supplied by spinal accessory latissimus dorsi it is supplied by nerve to latissimus dorsi or thoracodorsal nerve then both have attachments on scapula yes latissimus dorsi at the inferior angle few fibers these are arising from the dorsal surface of the scapula whereas trapezius it arises from the crest isn't it crest of the spine of the scapula upper lip as well as from the medial border of the acromion process okay so it is the insertion so attachments of the scapula it is a true statement and both are helping in abduction latissimus dorsi it is helping in adduction whereas trapezius it is helping in overhead abduction so this also a uh, false statement so both have attachments on scapula it is a true statement okay. all of the following are direct branches of brachial artery so brachial artery it is a continuation of axillary artery at the lower border of teres major muscle it gives following branches in the arm that is profunda brachii it is the first direct branch then it gives superior ulnar collateral and inferior ulnar collateral gives superior ulnar collateral and inferior ulnar collateral whereas anterior descending and posterior descending these are the branches from profunda brachii so if we have to look for the exception it will be anterior descending so have a look at the image brachial artery it gives rise to superior ulnar and inferior ulnar collateral whereas the profunda brachii which is also arising from brachial artery it is giving rise to anterior descending and posterior descending medial compartment of thigh is adductor compartment in arm adductor compartment is represented by so what you have to focus on they have asked the muscle in arm so it has to be coracobrachialis long head of the biceps brachii or medial head of biceps brachii latissimus dorsi it is not a muscle of arm so it is excluded 
then we have medial head of triceps the medial head of triceps it is not bringing about the adduction long head of biceps brachii it is also not bringing about adduction so the muscle that is coracobrachialis it is bringing about the adduction and it is representing the adductor compartment of the arm so correct answer is coracobrachialis dobon sign it is related to inflammation of subacromial bursa it is related to inflammation of subacromial bursa so this sign it is present when the bursa is inflamed and when the arm is by the side of the body or by the side of the trunk the person the physician when it gives pressure just below the acromion the person will feel pain but when the arm is abducted and the pressure is applied at the same point the bursa it will disappear under the acromion process and when the pressure is applied at the same point again the pain is disappearing so there is no pain on abduction of the arm so this is dobon sign positive dobon sign it is present in subacromial bursitis so subacromial bursitis is one of the or largest bursa of the body inflammation of lymph node it is lymphadenitis lymphagitis it is the inflammation of lymph vessels lymphoedema it is the soft tissue swelling due to the obstruction to the lymph drainage it is called as a lymphoedema lymphocele it is again an adverse effect of the surgery so post surgical complication lymphocele so it is again due to the obstruction of lymphatic drainage the lymph is collected in surrounding spaces particularly in the lower area that is the perineal area so these are seen either in the arm area or in the perineal area it is a complication of surgery lymphocele the question asked is inflammation of lymph nodes the correct answer is lymphadenitis skin of the floor of axilla it is supplied by intercostobrachial nerve so this intercostobrachial nerve the name itself suggest it is a intercostal nerve at well as well as it is going towards the brachial that means r so skin of the floor of the axilla it is supplied by intercostobrachial nerve root value is t2 and it is described as it is the lateral cutaneous branch of the second intercostal nerve what is intercostobrachial nerve it is a lateral cutaneous branch of second intercostal nerve so this was the explanation of quiz 1 thank you for watching